Hey guys and welcome, this is JNM with a new Blender 2.8 video about the timeline and the dope sheet. So first let's have a look at these features in Blender 2.79. Here you can see the timeline, I make this a bit bigger. You can move the slider here around and I'm going to create a very simple animation. So I enable automatic keyframe insertion, press the I key to create the first keyframe. And then I go to frame number, let's say 50 and move this object by pressing the G key. This is my very simple animation, you can see the different frames by moving the slider in the timeline. And here are these yellow lines where the automatic keyframe insertion inserted some keyframes. Now I set the end frame to 50 and the timeline displays the area of the animation with a lighter background from 0 to 50. Then I play the animation, that's nice, but I can't control the keyframes, I can't change them, I can't move them around, I can't delete them. If I want to do this, I have to open here a so-called dope sheet. Okay, here we go, I can see the different keyframes. When I move the object, I create new ones. And the selected frame of the dope sheet and the timeline is synchronized. If I like, I can change to the action editor now to create different actions. An action is just an animation and when you export your model and import it, for example, into a game engine, these actions represent different animations in your game, for example, an idle loop or a run cycle. In the second action that I created here, I make some modifications, move the keyframes, add new ones, and as you can see, when I move the slider or when I play the animation, the timeline and the dope sheet refer to the current action. What's not displayed in the dope sheet is the current start and end frame that are defined in the timeline. Ok, but now let's see how this looks like in Blender 2.8. So here's Blender 2.8 alpha version. And like I did in the first part, I make the timeline window a bit bigger. Then I also enable automatic keyframe insertion. Press I to add the first keyframe. All the same. But as you can already see here in the timeline, we have a keyframe, not these yellow lines anymore. And now I move again to frame number 50, press G to move the cube to create this simple animation. And again a keyframe appears in the timeline and this reminds us of the dope sheet. And surprise, it almost is a dope sheet. I can press this little plus icon here. And now you can see all the different keyframes for your object. Location, rotation and scale. Again, I set the end frame to 50. Then I use the automatic keyframe insertion to add new keyframes here at the middle. And below the timeline are some icons, which are especially good for beginners, that tells you how to actually use the timeline with the mouse buttons. So you can change the frame with the left mouse button, or you can move the keyframes with the right mouse button pressed. And you can pan the view when you press the middle mouse button and move the mouse. So this is the behavior that you have in your dope sheet. So let's open the dope sheet. You can change the view type now by the way by using the drop down in the upper left hand corner of the view. Which is better to find when you open a new view than having it in the lower left hand corner. So look at this, this is the same as in the timeline. And the dope sheet now also displays the area of the start and end frame in a lighter background color. There's also the action editor as before. And if you like you can manipulate the keyframes of your actions in the dope sheet or in the timeline. So in my opinion this is definitely a great improvement. But let's compare the features of the dope sheet and the timeline. To me it looks like that the only things you can't do in the dope sheet is to start and stop your animation to enable automatic keyframe insertion and to set the start and end frame of your animation. So perhaps the Blender developers could add these features to the dope sheet so we wouldn't need the timeline anymore, right? It's just an idea for a discussion. So it would be great if you add your opinion about that or other ideas to the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching this. I hope you like the video and this channel and if you do then don't forget to subscribe. If you want to support me consider being my patron, this would really help a lot. Thanks for this in advance and I'll see you in the next one.